A warm greeting. Today is Monday, July 7, 2025. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. In today's video, I would like to give an update on the cyclonic activity that we anticipate over the coming months, since next month marks the start of the peak of the season, which extends from mid-August to mid-October. So in this video, I will talk about the most recent projections from seasonal models and what changes, if any, are expected across the Atlantic and when we are most likely to see cyclonic activity again. As you should know, three tropical storms have already formed in the Atlantic. We had Tropical Storm Andrea, Tropical Storm Barry, and in recent days, Tropical Storm Chantal, which affected the states of South Carolina and North Carolina. So at the moment, we have had three tropical storms, and the normal for this date is for one tropical storm to have formed. So we can say that in terms of tropical storms, this year's season has been more active than normal. However, these tropical storms have been short-lived and therefore have not produced much accumulated cyclonic energy. In fact, when we analyze the graph of what is normal for the date, on average by July 7th we have four units of accumulated cyclonic energy, and this year we barely have one and a half. So while on one hand we can say that the hurricane season so far has been more active than normal, the reality is that when we look at accumulated cyclonic energy, we can say that activity has actually been close to normal for the moment. Remember that experts continue to forecast that the hurricane season should be a bit more active than normal, and in the coming weeks, we will be watching for frontal systems descending from the United States, as there is a possibility that we may see cyclonic development near the southeastern United States, just like what happened with Tropical Storm Chantal. However, I must mention that for the next two weeks, there is a phase of the Madden-Julian oscillation that is not favorable, which will be established over the Atlantic, reducing the chance of cyclonic formation. So it seems that the next two weeks should be fairly quiet, unless a system develops in the Gulf of Mexico or in the southwestern Atlantic. Then, according to the projection of the Madden-Julian oscillation, it won't be until early August when a favorable phase arrives that could support the formation of cyclones in the Caribbean and Atlantic. Let's now give an update on the current sea surface temperature anomalies. First, in the Niño 3.4 region in the Pacific, we continue with neutral ENSO conditions, and it is projected that these conditions will continue for the rest of the season which favors cyclonic activity in the Atlantic. Meanwhile, on the other hand, the North Atlantic remains with sea surface temperatures above normal, which also favors a more active than normal hurricane season. However, if we zoom in on the North Atlantic region, we can see that the sea surface temperature anomalies are mostly focused in the subtropical Atlantic zone, and it is very likely that these anomalies in this zone favored the formation of Tropical Storm Andrea. And the anomalies in this zone are so high that if we look at ocean temperatures, the area south of Bermuda has temperatures near 28 degrees Celsius, much higher than what we have between the Caribbean and Africa. This is important because on one hand, it can favor the formation of cyclones in the subtropical Atlantic, but it can also create atmospheric stability across the tropical Atlantic and hinder cyclone formation in this zone. So, we have mixed signals. First, a warmer than normal North Atlantic, also neutral ENSO conditions, but on the other hand, a subtropical Atlantic so warm that it could create some less favorable conditions for development. Meanwhile, you can see that the main cyclonic development zone in recent days has been warming, and currently on average we have sea surface temperatures warmer than normal, and that's something we'll be monitoring over the coming weeks. In fact, in the next graph, you can see in blue how since late June the main cyclonic development zone has been warming, and it is currently warmer than normal. This is largely due to the fact that the trade winds in the tropical Atlantic have been weaker than normal in recent days. And as we can see in this graph, it seems that the high pressure in the North Atlantic will be weakening causing the trade winds to decrease over the next two weeks. This means that it is possible that the temperatures between the Caribbean and Africa will continue to warm over the next two weeks. So it is definitely something we will need to watch closely just before the start of the peak of the season. Let's now look at the most recent projections from seasonal models. Let's start with the projection from the North American models, which for the peak of the season, between August, September and October, continue to show signs of neutral ENSO conditions or perhaps the return of La Nina while they show a North Atlantic with sea surface temperatures warmer than normal. However, the distribution of temperature anomalies in the North Atlantic continues to indicate that the strongest anomalies may be in the subtropical Atlantic and therefore could represent stability problems in the tropical Atlantic and make it harder for tropical waves to develop. And if we look at the rainfall anomaly projection, you can see that through the main cyclonic development zone, the North American models are projecting near-normal precipitation, while showing more than normal precipitation in the subtropical Atlantic, which makes sense with the very warm temperature anomalies we have in that area. So these models in general suggest that the Cape Verde season could be near normal, but cyclonic activity near the southeastern United States and the subtropical Atlantic could be more active due to the warm temperatures in that area. 
Let's also look at the latest update from the European model for the peak of the season. It continues to project neutral ENSO conditions across the equator in the Pacific, while also showing a tropical Atlantic warmer than normal, but also the most significant anomalies in the subtropical Atlantic. And on the other hand, if we analyze potential velocities, you can see in green the areas where low pressures and precipitation are favored, which for the month of August would be focused in the Indian Ocean and over Africa, which could produce strong tropical waves coming off the African continent. And while on one hand this could favor more cyclonic activity in the tropical Atlantic, the model also shows some stable and low rainfall conditions across the Caribbean, which could hinder the intensification of cyclones that form. This is why the European model is projecting near-normal cyclonic activity in terms of accumulated cyclonic energy, which has been a consistent forecast in recent months. And lastly, I wanted to talk about the pattern expected in the Atlantic and which tracks might be favored during this year. The can sips model shows that over the coming months, it is possible that high pressure in the northeastern United States may be stronger than normal, which could increase the risk of impact for sectors of the eastern United States. And if we analyze cyclone tracks in seasons that have had the absence of El Nino for two years, we can see in yellow the areas that could have a higher risk of cyclone tracks, which extends from the Cape Verde Islands through the eastern Caribbean and into the southwestern Atlantic. So if we go by this, the eastern Caribbean and the eastern United States may be the areas that see the greatest cyclone density during the peak of the season. However, remember that a single cyclone can cause damage in the region where you live. So everyone on the coast of the United States, Mexico, Central America, and the Caribbean must be prepared for the peak of the season and continue to monitor closely how sea surface temperatures vary over the coming weeks. I'll be on watch to keep you informed, and I invite you to like this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel by clicking the red button and hit the bell so you receive notifications when I record new videos. Well, with that, I say goodbye. See you then.